Today's podcast is a reminder to not take the easy route. Sometimes you got to do hard shit to get the results you want. And we're going to talk about how I witnessed this firsthand early in my radio career with a major advertising company that worked with Bob Evans. My goal is to help, to help restaurant owners finally get to where they want to go. But more than that, my goal is to find entrepreneurs within that segment that actually know what it means to hustle. That's my goal. Come on the journey with me. Restaurant Marketing Secrets, episode 522. I'm your host, Matt Plapp, and today we take a stroll down memory lane. And you're going to get two stories for the price of one. Same exact client, part one of the promotion, part two of the promotion. The first one is serious business talk only. The second part is pretty damn funny. But this goes back to 1999 when I was selling radio advertising for Oldies 103.5 in Cincinnati, Ohio. And one of my early clients was Bob Evans Restaurants and the grocery products. We had been working together for about six months, and our station fit the exact demographic of people that were not only eating at Bob Evans, but were also buying these products in grocery stores. So in April of 2000, they came to me with an RFP, a request for proposal. They were looking for marketing campaigns that could help get their product in the mouths of people that could then go and buy it at the grocery store. And I'm looking at everything we had on our agenda. I'm like, wow, this is fate. I have a gold mine for Bob Evans. We have live radio broadcasts for 45 days at grocery stores leading up to an event in late June. Where else would you want to sample, right? And what I'm talking about was we had Oldies Fest. It was an 80,000 person event. And it was a free ticketed event, but you had to get tickets at ticket stops. And these happened every day of the week for like a month and a half leading up. And it started in early May. The event was the end of June. Their whole proposal idea was we need momentum going into the summer because Memorial Day kicks off the grilling season. Like, well, great. We've got Biggs, a grocery store who is the title sponsor of Oldies Fest. I don't think they're around anymore. I think Remke's bought them. But we got the Biggs Oldies Fest ticket stops. We're at a Big's grocery store like five times a week for six weeks. What else could you ask for? So I gave them a proposal. And the proposal was they would be mentioned in a lot of radio commercials. They would have mentions live on their live remotes. And then more importantly, we would have a grill by the front door, sampling their products and handing people the product and coupons as they walked into the grocery store where they would buy the damn product. No brainer, right? And. Eh. The media buyer, Sue, gets back to me a couple weeks later and says, Matt, bad news. We're going with the Cincinnati Reds. I'm like, what do you mean? They don't, they don't, they don't have what we have. What, what did they offer you that was going to do more than we were doing at the point of purchase? Well, Matt, their promotion actually wasn't close to what yours was. Their promotion is one Reds game on a Tuesday night, about 40,000 people, and we'll sample on the main entry – the food and hand people the coupon. Yours is a gold mine, would more than likely do way more than we would expect or need, and 10 times more than the Reds promo. I'm like, okay, well, Sue, what am I missing here? Why are you telling me that we're not getting the business? Well, because your promotion would require me to babysit it for almost two months. I would have to coordinate shipping product, coupons. This would be on my plate for two months. I want to get this placed and off my plate. The Reds is a one and done. I was at that time around 24 years old, brand new in the marketing and was devastated because every time somebody told me no when I was young, I just, it crushed me. But especially when I knew it made complete sense. But I did get my revenge the next year. That was easy. And you know what else is easy? Dominating your marketing when you have the America's Best Restaurants free annual marketing plan program. Go to mattplapp.live slash 2024. mattplapp.live slash 2024. You will get a downloadable document that you can print off and plan your restaurant's marketing like never before. And this is specifically built for you, restaurant owners. And inside the online training is a month-by-month breakdown with three 
copy and paste campaigns and my personal favorite, the emails, the Facebook posts, the text, the graphics. Go ahead and join for free mattplapp.live slash 2024. Now back to the podcast. I mean, think about it. People sampling a bratwurst, getting a coupon, and then walking into a Reds game. You think they're going to keep that coupon? I'd be willing to bet half of them went to the ground. 25% ended up in the garbage can anyways. And maybe some made it to a nightstand around the area. And very few trickled into the grocery store to actually impact the Bob Evans sales in the grocery store. Whereas mine would have been sampled in front of said grocery store. They would have walked in top of mind. This shit's delicious. I got a great coupon. I'm going to buy some. But I didn't get that opportunity in year one. Year two, I did. This is where being patient and not crying over spilled milk comes in handy. Because a lot of times in the business world, we hate being told no. But what I've always learned from my dad is being told no once doesn't mean forever. It just means then. Fast forward a year later, Sue calls up and says, Matt, is there still that opportunity for the oldies ticket stops at the grocery store to do our partnership like you proposed last year? Last year's with the Reds was a complete flop. Our sales were terrible all over the summer. And we're back this year. We need it. We think your promotion's good. It is what it is. I'm going to have to have brought worse all over the office for two months. So I made it happen. We put it in place and we started the promo. Now here's the two funny parts about it. As a salesman does sometimes, you sell shit that you don't even ask if it exists. Well, in this case, I just thought it was pretty simple. You're grilling out, handing out samples. I didn't know the radio station didn't have a grill. And then when I figured out that I could bring my grill... I found out they had no way to transport it. And legally, the station was not allowed to transport the propane for insurance purposes. So Matt Platt borrowed my dad, Dwayne Platt's trailer, got my grill from my condo I was living at the time. And Matt Platt, in a suit, did the grilling of said bratwurst for six weeks at Big's grocery stores all over Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky. So I had to put up with a little different element than I was accustomed to. I got to learn that sometimes you have to roll your sleeves up and get your hands dirty. But I also learned, I guess you could say, about hillbillies. Now, I'm from Kentucky, so there's a part of me that's a hillbilly. But on the west side of Cincinnati, there's an area called Harrison. And there's Harrison, there's Hamilton. We always joke they're more Kentucky than Kentucky is. They're in Ohio. So I'm doing the bigs. Harrison Grill Out. And the reason this topic came up was Shaheen from my team and I, when we drove to Chicago yesterday for some business, we parked at the Biggs and Harrison and met to drive up there. And so this was top of mind after we parked there because this memory came flooding back. I'm in the front of this Biggs grocery store. I got a grill. I've got 20 or so bratwurst on the grill. It's it's hot as can be. It's you know probably May or June. I'm in a suit. I've got a plate with a bunch of little pieces chopped up with toothpicks. And this giant bubble walks up to me, looks at me, grabs two bratwursts off of the flame, flame and grill, starts eating them out of his own hands, grease going down his hands, on his arms, hot bratwurst, looks at me and says, these are delish, and then goes walking in the grocery store. That, my friends, was the ta- my first taste of hillbilly at a very high level. So I hope you enjoyed today's story. To wrap this up, sometimes when you take the easy route like Bob Evans did, you get the result that easy gets. I always talk about marketing with an alignment with fitness, that if you have to lose 100 pounds and you find a way to lose 100 pounds in a month, I can promise you it's not the right way. It's going to take you two to three years. Well, the same goes for marketing. Yes, handing out bratwurst and coupons at a Reds game one time for a couple hours was the easy route. And on paper, it reached a lot of people. But when you look at the actual logistics of it, it was a lazy way to go. And just like my journey with trying to lose some weight 10 years ago took me three years, marketing like this was going to take months. 
So when you look at what you're doing advertising for your restaurant, what is the easy route? What's the hard route? What is scalable? What's not scalable? Sometimes what you need to do is what's not scalable. We have clients of ours, Little Italy Restaurante, Louis Waffle House, that are making phone calls every week to customers in their VIP and loyalty programs and saying happy birthday. They're walking up to tables and handing happy birthday cards and gift cards for the next visit, giving them t-shirts. They're doing stuff that nobody else is doing because nobody else wants to put in the work. My friends, don't be like Bob Evans, or I guess you could say, don't be like Sue from the agency for Bob Evans. Be like Avery's team and be like Michael and Nick's team at Little Italy and Louis Waffle House. I'll see you tomorrow. So as you know, I don't charge my content. We don't have sponsors. We don't have product placement in here. But what I want your help with is spreading the word. If you're finding value here, do me a favor. Share this on your social media. Share an episode with something that made sense to you, that's relevant to your restaurant, that you got value from, and tag Matt Plapp and America's Best Restaurants. Also, go to America's Best Restaurants on Facebook and on Google and leave us a review. Let us know the impact we've had on your restaurant with our roadshow, with our marketing help, or with our podcast. And last but not least, if you want to take the next step and help me out a lot and help us out a lot, text me a testimonial, 859-743-2408. That's my cell. A selfie video would be awesome about the impact this content or our company is having on your independent restaurant. But worst case scenario, just a few kind words. The way we can help lift this industry up is to help get content like this to more independent restaurant owners, and you are the key to spreading the word. I appreciate your support. Have an amazing day.